So the reason why you're looking at a piece of pattern, a piece of the pattern and not the muslin right now is because I wanted to let you guys know there's two options and two ways to do this. You can re, you can disassemble that muslin, especially if you made adjustments to the muslin and you don't wanna to have to go all the way back and make the adjustments to the paper pattern. Or if you are 100% happy with that muslin mock-up and everything is fitting exactly the way you want it to fit, instead of taking that time to take apart the muslin and then sew it back together in the new form, you can just reuse your paper pattern. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to reuse my paper pattern because I'm fine with the way my dress uh, looked when I created the muslin mock-up. So what I'm gonna go through now is I'm gonna show you how to mark your final fabric it's a little bit different from how you mark your muslin because here you can't make as many markings on the fabric. You wanna make sure that when you're pinning the fabric down, you pin it the same way you pinned it on the muslin. And you just wanna make sure, because here we have a, a very distinct right side up. So on the muslin, you can't really tell what the right or the wrong side is because they're both the same. But when you do your final fabric, there will be a clear right side and wrong side. For me, my right side is the satin finish and my wrong side is more matte. So you'll have the same thing, whether it's a print, whether it's a finish, you'll know what side should be facing up. That's the side that you're gonna fold and then place the patterns on top of it. You wanna make sure you're also keeping in mind those grain lines and that you're placing the fabric in adherence to the grain line. So you do your pull test and you make sure you lay them out and make sure that the grain lines are being followed as you're placing your pattern. Once that's done, you go in and you cut your pattern out for each individual part. For me, I again, this uh, has seven parts, so you do the same thing. I also had to make sure I added that seam allowance that I wanted here for the, um, the side seam. So the same way I did it on my muslin, I did it here. And that's the only difference. So now we're gonna go in and begin to use a thread to mark some of the key points. So again, because we have the fabric here we don't want to mark on it and it's not really super professional to have a bunch of marking on it that's when the tailor and tax comes into play so we covered tailor's tax before and it's essentially the same thing you go in and you mark each of the dark points same technique that i'm going to apply to every single one of my uh, pattern pieces. Okay. I want to make sure I get this uh, point right here with my tailor's tag. Because remember, this point is going to let me know where I'm attaching my sleeve and how far I need to go in for my sleeve. I'm also going to do this point right here because this point is going to let me know where to place my facing and where to look for my neckline according to the size that I chose. Okay. Now the rest of these lines I'm not going to do because I cannot trace these lines on my fabric, obviously because it's gonna show on the front. But I do need to make sure that I get all my slashes. So all these little triangles you see, you have to still make sure that you go in while the fabric is still folded in correspondence with the size, you wanna make sure you get all those triangles clipped. Okay, so I have all my points. Oh, no, I'm missing one. The worst thing is when you take it off and then you realize you missed the point and then you have to go and place the entire thing back on and try to match everything back up and it's like, the worst so just try to make sure you do a quick surveillance over the entire pattern to make sure that you've done all your corresponding tailors tacks you've done all your slashes once i feel good about that i take this off take the pins out And I'm going to gently pull the paper pattern away. 
without losing any of my tailor's tacks. Okay, before I do any additional marking, because all my markings now need to be on the wrong side. So I can't go in and do any right side markings because it's gonna show on the fabric. So remember how we said how we do our tailor's tacks? We go in, make sure that they're long, the thread has been cut long enough. And then we just go in and gently cut as we open. I think I have one more here, right in the middle. Okay. So now we have our tailor's tacks. We can see where the bus start is. We can see where the waist start is. So when you're marking it, you can either use the wax paper, but the trick is with wax paper is, as you can see, it transfers. So that's why when we covered the tool section, I said it was so important that you get accustomed to this magic disappearing chalk. This is what I use. I use this disappearing chalk because it comes off during, it's, it stays long enough and it's bright enough that I can see it when I'm actually stitching on the machine. And it also uh, goes away when you press it. So if I ever need to actually make a um, mark on the front of the fabric, I'm fine with it because I'm pretty confident using it over so uh, such a length of time that it's going to erase. But you still want to always test this before you apply it to the fabric because you don't want to be, you know, there when you realize, oh, it doesn't work for this particular fabric. So I would say always test it. Um, but definitely, if you don't feel comfortable with that, do the regular chalk and then baste it and that way you can see you should baste it anyway but again this chalk is the best chalk for you to use because more often than not test it first it does come off when you apply heat to it so using this chalk i'm just going to go in and just trace those dart areas You know, this is just it, what it takes to make a garment. You know, to make a really well-made, well-put-together garment, it does require a lot of work. You know, the tediousness of going in and marking everything and making the muslin and undoing the muslin, especially when you're talking about more expensive fabrics, or even if you're not, you don't wanna go and have your heart set on a look and then you realize you, you've, you know, either have to go back and buy more fabric, you know, heaven forbid it's sold out. So even though this process seems like a little bit tedious, it is an important process, especially when you're making a custom gown or a custom garment, you wanna make sure that you've eliminated as many um, errors as possible. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Videos are uploaded weekly covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more.